really appreciated that. It's something that I've, I've been um, really valuing in children's ministries. So thank you so much for being thank here you. and all that you can pour into us. Great. Okay, I'm waiting for my wife. She's the IT person. And what I want to do is in this uh, next session, uh, as we kind of drew back the bow and where we were at in the first session, just us becoming um, becoming um, a reservoir and just re learning to receive ourselves because it's out of that reservoir that we are going to have something to impart uh, to our children and in, a, in our ministries. But then we're going to be you know, just sharing that this is a, just not a lesson preparation, what we, we were experiencing in, in, in the last session, but more so it's, it's a walk, of course, and it's a lifestyle that uh, we have been invited uh, to be part of. And so that's what, a, you know, we want that, we want to, we want to approach it and receive it and, uh, you know, be those um, reservoirs and, and those containers that when we do meet with our kids, we have a perspective and we have, um, we possess that manna of the Father's love, of His goodness, of His, of His great love that He has for the kids. And that, and uh, we didn't get to, uh, the byline of um, our ministry, which is kids in His presence, but there is a byline that says, nurturing a child's affection for Father God. And that kind of sums up everything that we we do that uh, we talk about that you know that's our heartbeat and we really believe that's uh, just echoes the heartbeat of, of the father as well and what he is um, highlighting and what is um, the catalyst for this present move of God that we're in so my wife is not here so. um, any, are there any questions with uh, the last session that you might have any any testimonies or things that you have experienced in your children's ministry along those lines that we were sharing uh, the first uh, session. I'm going to finish my cookie here. Anybody? Canadian cookies are maple. I know. These are the first to go at the one tray. These are really good. Okay, well, let's get started. Mm. Okay, now if you brought your Bibles, but um, I'm going to pray first, but then I'll, there's a scripture I want to share that kind of sets the tone for uh, what stirs in my heart and for why we want to share what we're sharing. Um, so, Father, we just thank you for this uh, last session and for what you're doing in this conference as a whole. God, I just pray for that there would be hunger and those that have come. Because it's it's the hunger of the people that just draws out the truth and, and the anointing of, of and um, the supernatural takes place. Just as it was with Jesus, with those when he saw hunger, he was moved with that compassion. The anointing was released. And the Father was revealed, the kingdom of heaven was revealed. And the people were touched, and they were blessed, and drawn closer to you. So God, we just thank you for the hunger that is here. The hunger that these people have brought these, for this time, for this weekend, to receive more fr from you. And to say yes to the invitation that you've extended to them. We just thank you again for this time. Amen. You know, as you know, it's amazing when, it, when Jesus came it was his mission you know, you know, what, you know if you said Jesus had a, a mission statement uh, it was in I think framed in John 14 6 and I shared it just in the you know, last session with when he said you know I am the way the truth and the life no, no man comes to the father but by me or through me and we saw that when we accept what Jesus did on the cross to eradicate the barrier of sin where his cross became a bridge to the throne that we could come and sit in the lap of the Father. And 
And w when I was attending Bible school in Dallas, Texas at Christ for the Nations um, many lifetimes ago, I one morning uh, chapel service, we'd have chapel before and we went to our classes every morning and the worship was phenomenal. Um, God's presence was just sweeping the whole auditorium and I just um, was just taken up in this vision of where I um, was suddenly like a five-year-old child and I was in this huge room and at the end of this room was this big throne and I was so drawn to it and as I went walked closer and it's like in that slow motion um, speed um, it became clear that, the, that it was the, the throne of the Father and I looked up and got to see, see his face and there was such a, a, a countenance of joy because he saw me and it was, it was like a, a, a gravitational pull a draw for this little child that I had just become in his presence and in his sight and I just began to run and just uh, a couple feet before the, the throne I just leaped and he just caught me and wrapped his arms around me and I just you know, could feel his breath and his warmth and the, the uh, utter peace and, and, and safety that only we can find in his arms and uh, we just began to laugh and giggle like a, a little child and you know, just, just being with him and, and there's just, uh, just the joy of being in his presence because in his presence there's this fullness of joy and I was just overwhelmed by it and we were just laughing and playing in his lap and hugging and being kissed and I was whispering back and, and kissing him and all this was going on when uh, something caught my attention and I looked to my right and there was like this pool of blood and I looked up and there I saw this cross and on this uh, cross was, was Jesus laying, uh, hanging on his cross and as, as bloody as it looked and as painful as it looked, there's an amazing look on his face as he was watching me in, in, the, in the arms of, of Papa God. And he had such a smile and, and, uh, and, and, a, 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 and a, like a, he's accomplishing what he was sent to do. Guess what? You know, the suffering on the cross it allowed me to be in the arms of, of Papa God, and that just you know is is an indelible vision on you know on, on me personally. And so it's so easy for me to just you know share the, you know this topic of of bringing children, his children, into into his presence. Because in Hebrews it talks about, and I, I think I really got an understanding about where it says that for the joy set before him, he endured the cross. And I always wonder, what, what was the joy? And I, I just see that as he was hanging on his cross, the Father in his mercy showed like on a big screen all that would be accomplished. And I share this with the kids as they're oftentimes just laying down or just sitting quietly uh, around the throne that we, 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 we create and they're just you know loving on, on Papa God and receiving uh, from, from him that what's happening in children's church this morning was what Jesus got to see when he was on the cross and he said yeah it's worth it and so you know, if this if this is what the Father wants, He has made a way through His Son. He's made a way, and so much in the desire for Him to embrace, no matter where we've been or what we've done. But when we recognize it, it's His goodness that brings us back to Him, and it's all worth it. And that's just an amazing thing. So we're gonna do the PowerPoint. Yeah, we can do that. <laughs> 
So uh, this this session we're going to be dealing. Study that is, is here that wasn't here the first. Session? Yeah, oh, yeah. I see some different faces. I see some different faces. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So I just kind of doing a little. Oh, you did, did you get a good quick introduction? Or? Right. Did. Yeah. Oh. So what we're going to do? Is this on? Is this recording? Yes. Yeah, it's been recording. So great. So what you got right now? Okay. Great. All right, so uh, the, the last session was us becoming uh, a reservoir to feed the manna to, to our children. Uh, so we're going to be talking a little bit more. How do we actually implement or how do we facilitate what, what's in the heart of God, what he wants in this hour for his children to, to experience and the, the level of friendship and uh, abiding friendship and, and intimacy with him. So uh, I did want to share this, this passage in... Uh, Matthew 7, 21, 23. And I read this uh, years ago, and it just had a real haunting effect on me. And um, I'll read starting with verse 21, and then we all know this uh, passage where it says, and Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, will enter into the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father who is in heaven uh, will enter. And many will say to me on that day, Lord, Lord, did we not prophesy in your name, and in your name cast out demons, and in your name perform many miracles? Then I will declare to them, I never want to hear this, what he's about to say, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. And as, as, as that just haunted me, I, I was really asking God, you know, what? What is the key here? And, and it's those who, who would really know me. And to what we have seen over the years in this uh, present move of God is that the invitation for getting to know Him has been extended. And, and I believe that, you know, like Moses knew, knew, knew God's ways, Israel knew about His works. Uh, Jesus said it best in John 15 that we already went over, but, you know, abiding friendship, where the things that we do are born out of a friendship relationship, not to acquire affection or approval or pleasure or acceptance. It's ours as a gift already. But that we do the things we do because it means so much to our best friend. So, so what we want to do is um, our goal... It's for our children to actually know who Jesus is, know who the Father is in an intimate, personal way in which they will recognize his presence, they'll feel his presence, his manifest presence, his touch, his whispers, and, and his ways. And that is what I believe God is inviting us uh, to do as, as fathers and mothers and as uh, children's ministries. And so, so let's... Uh, Let's see if I can uh, do this so you can see. Um, we, we've done uh, something that is called unzipping heaven in our children's uh, services. Um, basically what it is is we are very intentional about inviting God's manifest presence. You know, there's an omnipresence. He's everywhere. We teach our children that. But when, you know, he's everywhere, but when we are in his lap, when we feel his arms, or when we feel we're overcome with this, the, the presence of his peace, or we're just feeling loved and safe, or maybe he's just wiping away uh, the nightmares or the fear about mom and dad going through a divorce, or, or being ridiculed or bullied at school, or when that is being dealt with because we're in his presence, that's the level of relationship that we're, we're talking about. And when we as children's ministers and parents get to create this place, uh, we're seeing uh, transformed hearts. And I got a great testimony I want to share later. So you can imagine why we're that intentional, intentional about um, creating or an unzipping heaven. Um, we we you all often use this term, we want an open heaven when our kids 
kids come in. Meaning that there's just an unrestricted flow of what God wants to do with our kids that morning or in that service or in our home. And we're just, as we're learning his ways, we know that he responds to what he desires to see. And we're, we're going to be more intentional about uh, creating this place of encounter. Because that is, you know, I was asked, what is the one goal that you have when you meet with your children? And that is uh, that they would have an encounter because we owe our children an encounter with God. Because it's in that encounter that the hearts are transformed and changed. And so we, what we want to do when the kids gather um, uh, for the morning session, normally we would have two, two and a half hour children's church uh, sessions. You can imagine how we would want the atmosphere to be established as soon as possible of his presence and um, following after him. Once he, he, he comes, once he's been invited, we want to entertain his presence as well. It's just as important, if not more important, than learning how to just ask him to come. But now that he's here, we're not going to ignore him. And so we're going to share a few things. And then uh, we'll be getting more into the details of a broader spectrum of how we create a kingdom atmosphere in our children's services. So uh, after tonight, I'm going to share more about the heart and the vision that God has for our children. And then tomorrow we'll go into uh, how do we facilitate that, uh, implement that in a very practical way. So uh, Unzipping Heaven, we just call it the one in Open Heaven, and it's just uh, amazing. So there's just some things that we have experienced that um, just really um, causes this to happen. So again, um, we lay this foundation that creates a filter for our, our children. And, and from scripture, from his word, we establish the truth that God is good and he's in, in, in a good mood, being, being very, very approachable. And there's such a drawing capacity or effect that God has on his children when they realize that he is good. And so, you know, some of the things that we really uh, want to uh, establish, and this creates the filter for what they're going to receive or reject. That he is good, kind and good. That he is merciful. And we, we, we share scripture on that, that he's, he forgives. And that he is um, a lavish giver. And that he, we can never outgive him. And, and so it's our motivation to, to, be a, to be a giver. It's our motivation to forgive others. It's a, our motivation because we're his sons and daughters and we have inherited. Once we learn his character nature, it forms the basis of something called inheritance. We'll get into that in a moment. But that we can be kind and good because he is. Okay. Okay, when we recognize the sound of his voice, um, in, in our quiet times, in the last session, we just had a quiet time where we just invited God to um, cover us with his thoughts, to, to release his, the thoughts that he has for us, like the grains of sand that David talks to, Psalms 147, that they outnumber the same grains of sand, and we just, just kind of sat on the beach or laid down on the beach of heaven and just asked the Father to come and just begin to cover us with his good thoughts. And so we recognize the sound of his voice. We know that it's gentle. It's, it's going to bring peace. And then through time, it becomes a familiar voice. When we, when we have a long-standing friendship with someone, when they call, we don't have to ask, who is this? Because we know his voice. We know their sound, the sound. And so these are some things that we want to... Uh, you know, the children develop in, in their filter in, in what they are going to receive and not receive. Gentle, peaceful. Well, our last session, just, you know, this room got filled with God's presence and peace. And he's so willing to establish that. And then doing this with young Mary over time. Okay. Okay. Okay, again, um, I mean, maybe sounding like a broken record, but it's, uh, what we're doing is layer upon layer, line upon line, precept upon precept. Um, the core of all of our children's ministry is um, the Father's heart and the, the, the very nature of it. Because as we 
discover and we receive the revelation of who the Father is and, and the nature of his heart, some things begin to take place in us. We see that um, we, we hear about his value, like when we're quiet before the Lord in listening prayer, just looking in his presence. Um, I you know, we'll have these times, and sometimes I may have a leading or a prompt, but sometimes I just felt like, oh, God just wants to let them know how much he values them, and I'll just, as the kids, just sit and just be still. You know, our, our worship leader was, our worship team was often just one guitar player that would play, and uh, we just invite his presence, have the kids invite God's presence to, and to lean in to listen, and they would just begin to hear how he values them and what a treasure they are in, in, you know, to him and what they mean to him. Um, also, um, there are, with the, our true identity is revealed. That we are a son and a daughter, we're a prince or a princess. Um, we are um, special in his sight because he created us. And we know how good, every good and perfect gift, God only has one kind of gift, and that is good and perfect. And everything he does is good. And if he created me, it reflects his nature, his character of who I am because of my father. And that. Uh, um, if I know my true identity, I'm not going to accept um, anything contrary to what I've been hearing from him or what his word says about me. So we put up this shield or this filter either to receive truth or begin to reject it because the enemy is not trying to play fair. So if we, we know our value and we um, we discover and reveal a true identity that we have his esteem. He esteems us. And that doesn't change. Self-esteem is still self. And it varies with circumstances, emotions, hormones, all of that. But God's um, esteem. And that's just something that needs to be just layered and layered and layered when our kids gather in our, in our, in our classes. And then um, if there's, if we know our value, we know our identity, we now have permission to pursue our destiny. Because if I have value and I mean so much to him, obviously there's a purpose for me to be here. And we just get to run with that, of who they are uniquely um, wired, uniquely made, an individual puzzle piece that is significant as, significant as the person next to you. And so that begins to just um, cut away jealousy and envy. But what we do is, you know, having the kids come up and we celebrate who they are and we cheer them on and we, 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 we just um, encourage and affirm them in, in our classes. So they're learning how do we relate in the body and into the world with one another. We can do that if we know who we are. And then in, 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 the, in the destiny, you know, what, what, um, what do you like to do? What are, what are, what are, what are your preferences? What are, what are your bounds? What, are, what, what sports? Or what do you like to do in, in your math, music, you know, whatever? You don't have them come up and share and you just celebrate that. Because they're uniquely made and a treasure and a value. And so we're creating this place where kids can step into um, who they are and be encouraged to pursue what God has wired them to be and what, what's in their heart. Okay. Um, as we establish a, a present space for God-friendly children's ministry, um, the basis, once again, is... is Something happens. It's like the hub and their spokes. Because the things that we want to, and we'll get into this more probably tomorrow, uh, the things we want to equip our kids to, you know, with to, to be a representative and to represent Jesus and, and the kingdom, uh, these are some of the, the things that we want to impart and equip our kids with. And some of the activities and kingdom, uh, you know, things that we do. And I just wanted to show you that, that 
everything we want our kids to receive and do emanates from the presence and heart of God. In other words, everything that we want them to do, like uh, praying for the sick, prophesying, um, intercession, you know, and all these uh, things, worship, is a function of relationship with God. And you can look at these things as almost uh, like an inheritance, an inheritance that's that's still in, in, in relationship with God. And that each one of these things that our kids do that we want to see them do is a function uh, or is a result of their relationship with God. And what they do reflects back to the character and nature of God. And that creates a, a situation where um, our kids you know, are operating in the kingdom out of service and empowering others rather than controlling people. Because each one of these things can, so many of these things can be used um, as, as control rather than um, releasing people into their destiny. So the whole realm, everything we, that kids do, everything that we want them to, to partner with is a function of relationship. Okay? All right. Um, we talked about the inheritance, you know, the treasure that God has for them. That as our kids... Um, walk across this cross that bears our sin that has been dealt with, it doesn't stop there. So often, you know, we want our kids to get saved, but that's like just getting in past the gate of Disneyland. Because what God has is life and life abundantly. If, all, if we settle for our sin, and I didn't get, get, get my heart on this, that if we just settle for our sins being forgiven, we're, we're at a, a sum zero. And it limits and it only um, marginalizes everything that Jesus did for us on the cross. As, as we walk this plank or this bridge that Jesus laid down for us by dying on the cross, we now come to, to the Father as sons and daughters in a place to receive inheritance. And it's that inheritance that's the abundant life that he gives us, he um, equips us with, and releases us with to bring his kingdom of heaven to earth. And so, and so we don't want them to stop with having their sins forgiven. But that's just the entryway to so much more that Father has for us. So, as as our kids are more and more encountering his presence, as we've been brought in, it's going to develop a filter, the eyes and the ears of their heart. Their faith will grow in him because, and so important is, is something called trust. And everything, so many things of faith is, is a function of trust. Um, courage is a function of trust. And we want our kids to be standing in this place of trust because it's going to be the only unshakable thing there is. Word says that everything that can be shaken will be shaken. World systems that will be shaken. Um, things that we've depended on in the past are going are going to be shaken, but that's okay because the unshakable will be will be much more prominent, and our kids are going to be that in that place. Of, of, of what is unshakable. It will have a drawing effect for others who are um, who are trusted in the chariots. But what they're standing on because of their relationship with the God, knowing who he is and their affection for him, is going to keep them in this place of stability and prominence and, more importantly, influence to the world. So God implants truth into the hearts of the children that we teach. You know, God says that, you know, my words are spirit and they are life. So when we teach in scripture, um, the Holy Spirit must be involved, must be engaged to take what uh, we're teaching them. And he, he, this is something that only he can do. And he needs to be given a place in our ministries to do this. But to take the word and the principles of what we are saying and teaching, and there has to be teaching, but giving him that opportunity to take those truths and plant them into the spirit, you know, into the heart of our children, where it's going to take root and grow and create that behavior that we want to see in our kids. Okay, 
So how do we do it? I'm just going to touch uh, tonight. I'm going to be talking about uh, one of the mantles that God is placing and inviting us to receive, and that is of the priesthood, and how we as children's ministers and parents um, get to operate and, and function as a true priest. And basically, um, ministering to God, ministering to children, and preparing the temple or the atmosphere of God in our ch children's ministry or home, but then the altar where we get to um, bring, invite our kids to engage His presence to meet Him. Okay. So, so how do we do that? Well, to prepare this place that's invitational to God's presence for Him to come begins actually before before uh, our children's service uh, starts. Um, we we'll gather around, you know, we have, you know, I was blessed to finally have a team after years of, you know, pouring in and developing. <laughs> it didn't happen overnight. And I just want to encourage you that everything that we're sharing about took time, took persistence, took faithfulness, um, and just uh, stubbornness to, to actually, um, to, to establish. So with our team, we would, you know, we would uh, pray. We would uh, just want to be all on the same page, heart to heart, because we were all going to be operating as, as priests, as ministers, and we all wanted to have that, um, the same heartbeat uh, for when our kids would come. Um, there was a time that, you know, I'd open up the, you know, the, the, the children's church doors and, and, you know, I'd set up the tables, get the snacks ready, and I'd be the first one there, and, and and there would often, you know, be kids that would be dropped off early. So what are we going to do with the, with the kids? You know, I, I got certain play sets originally, and so the kids that came early before children's service started, they had, uh, you know, their dinosaurs, their horses, and castles, and all this in the play. And it was really working good. But as time uh, continued uh, on, and more and more we got to see that how much God wanted um, just a presence-based uh, children's ministry, uh, we started preparing the room uh, that would be uh, an invitational to him. And so we had our keyboard there, and, and this one, you know, one of our team members, our 10 year old daughter, had, was learning how to play the piano and the keyboard. And so we thought, well, maybe she could just come and just play whatever notes, chords that uh, she knew um, on, on this keyboard. And, and she just began to play. And so even before uh, the kids would start coming in, um, there was just uh, an atmosphere where this 10-year-old was just playing uh, just some soft music, setting the stage for something special. And as more kids would come in, instead of you know, running around chasing each other, uh, uh, we, uh, we began to invite them uh, just to, you know, if they came, I just want you to lay your hand on each chair. Just ask you know, for, for God's presence and peace to come. And so we had some playing on, on the keyboard. You know, half a dozen kids that came in early just began to uh, to pray, seek to seek to seek, or maybe just get some kids with uh, worship flags and just start walking around, just creating again this this atmosphere that caused a, a shift. Uh, ultimately, again, it didn't happen overnight by any means. And then, uh, you know, having other kids play. Uh, okay, so the back. Uh, yeah. Very good. Okay. Okay, you can go to the crawl time. A lot of times what we would do when we first uh, began to, to, to introduce um, the presence of God to our kids, I just sensed, um, got this vision of a, of a flock of sheep that were out in the field all, all week long. And it was, our, it was our little kids that would be coming in. And just like sheep out in the field, they would get stickers and bugs and ticks and fleas and mud. And it was just their exposure to, to, to the world that week. Maybe um, they had an argument with mom and dad on the way home. Maybe some yucky stuff was happening at school. Or they had just had some bad, bad things happen you know, during the week, just creating an attitude. So what we'd do, um, I'd have all these get out of their seats and just come up and sit up front. And our team would be like shepherds, you know, and so they formed like a semicircle behind um, the kids that were now sitting right in front of me. And it just seemed like it was creating a corral, and a corral is a, is a place of safety for the livestock. 
hit a target in this place, in, the, in, the, in, in, the, in the sense. And what we wanted to do, we just wanted to find out how the kids were doing. I wanted to get a spiritual uh, temperature reading for our kids. And I would just ask them questions, you know, sharing, you know, how are they feeling t- uh, today? Or what are they feeling or sensing that maybe that what God would want to do today? And so I've just taken, you know, probes <laughs> and getting uh, getting temperature readings. And, and whatever I felt, you know, because I didn't have this scripted, I did not have this written, but I just felt like this is something that, you know, Holy Spirit wants to do today. And trying to get feedback from them and get them a sense, or then ask maybe our team members, you know, what are you guys sensing? You know, is it tiredness? Is it apathy? Is it, uh, are, you, are you sensing any fear today? Or what is it? Mean? It would, things would be revealed. And so what we do, we just um, bring the kids, okay, in, into this corral, and we just ask um, the Holy Spirit to come, and give the, the children an opportunity just to tell, tell Jesus, you know, what's going on, you know. And so immediately they, they come in and from where they were out in, in the world and everything that was happening into a place of safety, a place of uh, inviting God's presence and allowing uh, an exchange to take place of what they were carrying. And uh, sometimes we would uh, do something called a spiritual bath and I'd get my heart bucket out and, and we'll share on this one tomorrow, but you know, talked about how our heart's like a bucket and that we, uh, we can carry, and buckets carry things and our heart can carry things and it can be good things, could be not so good things. It just depends. And so we're just going to ask Holy Spirit to come and, uh, and bring his flashlight and, you know, to shine in their heart. And, and at this point, I'm, I would not tell the kids, you know, what, what's there or anything, but I'm going to give an opportunity now. And this is where our kids have been brought to this altar where now only Holy Spirit and the kids can do something. And he's going to reveal to them the good things that are in their, in their hearts or the struggles or the things that are, are yucky. And I'd kind of identify some of those, but I wouldn't, you know, take it any further. And so we'd have this time, and if uh, our team members had anything, you know, we'd mention that. And so we just uh, invite Holy Spirit, you know, whatever's there. You know, the cool thing about you know, if there's, if there's good things that are in your heart, just, just thank Jesus for those great things. And they would. And then, okay, now if there's anything that's yucky, uh, the cool thing is all you have to do is, is if Holy Spirit shows you something that's yucky in your heart, just tell Jesus about it and then it'll go away. If we're faithful to confess our sins, they'll be taken away. And so, and I just watch, you know, the sense what the Holy Spirit's doing. Then I said, okay, did anybody need to do that? Does anybody need any more time? Okay. So if Jesus takes something out of our heart, it's just like him and the Father to put something that's even greater back in. So let's just ask Jesus now to put in what he wants to put in the place of that yucky stuff. So we'll just watch. And so, and then just let's just thank him for what he received. Now, what the cool thing is, we then I then get to ask what, the kids, what did he just receive? And it's just amazing what um, that they were where they were getting. They were getting peace, or just uh, comfort, or just more of his love, or I got hope, or you know, God showed me that you know. Um, Everything's going to be okay at home or at school or something like that. But see, I couldn't do that. All I could do was just set up the altar and invite them to, to, to encounter and interact um, with God's presence. And so that's basically a you know, divine uh, corral time. We would do a lot of another another exercise uh, we would do periodically just to mix it up is what we call the umbrella time out of Psalms 91, where it talks about how he extends his wings and, and how we're under his shadow or under his protection or nearness and to him we're safe and secure. And we just, you know, stand with a big umbrella and have the kids just come around. And basically it's the same thing. But just sharing 
any part in uh, what, what, what the Father would, would have for them um, you know, for that day. So it's just a really colorful umbrella time. And then, of course, uh, the heart bucket, um, where we have this exchange, and we'll be talking more about that. But that was just a great, uh, it's a great tool to help bring children into that, that, that presence. Sorry, what, what's the heart bucket? The heart bucket is, um, it's just a, a, a tool. It uh, happens to look a lot like this. <laughs> it's just a bucket, and uh, we can put various objects in it to just explain um, the nature and character of the Father, um, explain what might be in our heart, and how we can interact and, and make an exchange oftentimes, or just for God desiring to put something special into our heart. And uh, Tomorrow we're going to do some exercises on that. Um, and then we have some uh, curriculums and teachers, uh, bless you, on, uh, on how on some lessons that we have used. And uh, I want to get, you know, talking more about that, you know, say for tomorrow's lesson uh, or session. But one of the things that we value highly is something that we call soaking in God's presence or just being still or uh, Kind of listening prayer. Again, it's just this, this place where it's just one on one um, with with God's manifest presence, and you know, and we'll teach. We have some teaching on, on this uh, in our curriculum, but we'll we'll introduce it and we'll sh- and share something like this that it's you know so fun and exciting to share God's love with others, to witness, to pray for others who are hurting, and to bring healing to the sick. But, and it surely makes Father God happy. He loves that. But there's something that pleases God even more, and that's spending time with Him. And He des- desires something called intimacy. And again, we've, we've uh, shown that all, all, already. But our f- f- keynote, uh, or our foundation in Scripture is in Psalm 46.10, which says, Be still and know that I am God. And for kids, it's, you know, the operative word here is still, <laughs> to be still. And I'll uh, often show, I want to let you hold this. And we introduce the, the whole concept, again, you know, our heart's like a bucket, but, you know, God has, all, has a bucket too, and in his heart bucket, there's good things. And one thing that uh, he wants... Um, Sponges. Our heart is a lot like a sponge. Okay. All right, now I'm going to take out this heart because I, every one of us has a heart that's like a sponge, but I want you to feel that. Br- brush it up against your face. Right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, it's, it's kind of scratchy. Yeah, it's not very soft. It's kind of scratchy. You know, our hearts can be off, oftentimes very dry. And what causes dryness? What causes dryness is sometimes our attitudes, and you know, or just you know, just you know, when bad things happen, or we're just really tired and we're grouchy. Our our, our heart, like this dry sponge, can not be not be very nervous. But God wants our hearts not to be dry like that, but to be filled with Him saturated and full of his love. And how many of you have ever been outside playing real hard or working real hard and you'd be really thirsty and you just want a cold, refreshing drink more than anything else? You know, like you raised up. Well, God wants us not to be dry and and thirsty like that. He wants us to be full and refreshed of, of himself. It's a lot like, and a lot of times I'll have uh, two kinds of plants, or pictures of plants. One is brown and dry, and the other one is green, and it's um, a vibrant, and it, it has fruit on it. So when God wants us, he wants us to be like this green plant, not like this brown, withered plant. So what he wants to do, He wants us to be filled with himself. And so I'll begin to, to pour on this. Now, how many would love
love to just be filled and poured upon by God's goodness and love. And so they all raise their hands. Well, there's a, a scripture in Psalms 46, 10 says, be still. And so what we're about to do, we're going to allow God to fill us. But we're just going to be quiet and still before him. Because if he's pouring water and we're moving around like this, we're not going to get a whole lot. But the Bible says to be still and just relax. And if you go to sleep, it's okay. Because what he wants to do is pour all of himself on us. You know, there's a scripture that says that the more and more that we're in his presence and his glory, we change. We become more and more like him. It's a lot like a cucumber being placed in a pickle jar. That cucumber will be changed forever because it's in being just covered by pickle juice. And God's pickle juice is his love, his kindness, his forgiveness, his goodness. And what do you think will happen if we just keep soaking like a cucumber in God's pickle juice? We'll become like him. More and more like him. And so then, you know, I look Okay, now this sponge has changed. It's now dripping, it's full, it's full of God's love, it's full of his presence, et cetera, et cetera. And so now we're changed. We're not like that cold or that scratchy, dry sponge that we just felt. And so we we prepare the prepare the kids. By, uh, by by that demonstration, and then we just will will begin to lay or lay out you know an opportunity and this exercise for them to be still because they know that what God wants to give them is good because we've been teaching them on His character and nature, and they're going to to want that. And I'll tell you when next slide you can see how they're. This was when I took a, a team to Mexico, and just uh, he, the boy on the right of, was on our team, and uh, you know the question about can preteen boys do this? Yes, they can. <laughs> <laughs> and okay, next one. And we had about eighty children just in the room, and for at least twenty minutes or more. I mean, after we taught with an interpreter. <laughs> yeah, just uh, just came in a manifested way. And just, um, you can see how engaged and in, in God's presence uh, these kids are. And for me as a, as a children's minister, as a pastor at that time, just watching this take place where the altar was created simply with a, a bucket and spending some water and just teaching about good, the, the goodness of God, and how easy it was for our, for the kids. And wherever we do this, it's, it's just so easy because God does it. Not because of my great abilities, but that we just open, unzip heaven, invite him, and willing to take a risk and step out on that limb and ask him to come. Because if he doesn't show up, this would not happen. And again, it, it took. It takes time, but again, God shows up and it happens. Okay, next one. So in this uh, time of soaking and in this time of just uh, being in the presence, uh, we would then uh, interview interview the kids as to what the, what did they get, uh, what did God show them, how are they feeling, and that that's my favorite time because now I'm seeing just on one-on-one, -on -one, how they encountered him. And, and a lot of times uh, afterwards we'll just celebrate. Or we do several things. If I sense that God was just filling them and uh, in the interviews and getting feedback from the kids of what God just did, and if they felt like, oh, three or four of them just received God's peace, okay? I would just have those kids come up front and I would ask the rest of the class, you know, how many have been having nightmares? Or how many are, are been worried about some 
something. And every time, the kindness will go up. And those kids that just received in the soaking place, what they received from God just fresh, was this piece I released then to go and to minister to the other kids in the class. Again, nothing was scripted, nothing, this was not maybe on my agenda at all. Maybe this all just kind of unfolded in, in, well, I was setting up chairs before everybody came. But again, when we create this atmosphere, God is so desirous and faithful to show up and to reveal himself. And that's the essence of you know, the presence-based uh, children's ministry. Uh, we do something, uh, well, what I was going to say is, we often will do something uh, in, a, in a conjunction with soaking, it's called squeezing. I may feel uh, just really um, impressive. Okay, what I want to teach the kids to minister out of their overflow. Not a uh, need necessarily, but if they just receive something, we'll get we'll find out what those things that God decided to give. Uh, we might break up into small groups. And right now, what you just received with your wet sponge, who's going to ask you not to, to have Jesus uh, squeeze you on others? And so you will know, just you know say. We, what God just gave you, you get to give to others. And so we'll let us break up in small groups and we'll uh, have ministry time. So they're learning a very important principle of what they receive, they have, they can give. And sometimes we'll, we'll celebrate at the end and we can do something called a fire panel where we'll have our ministers, our team members, and other, others uh, line up face to face, forming a, a corridor, and then as the band's playing, or we have recorded music, you know, celebration music, oh, we'll just have the kids come marching through, and we just lay hands and bless them, and, you know, whatever God wants to do. Um, and so that's a lot of the things that we, we will do in our, in our class. And you can see we have prayer sticks, uh, doing prophetic things, uh, waving flags over the kids, just blessing them, you know, the colors and often mean different things. So we're just blessing the kids as they come through. And, you know, they'll come through and they'll want to come through again and again and again because, uh, you know, it's fun and they're getting, they're getting blessed. But they're just re realizing that um, engaging God is fun. Engaging God is personal. Engaging God changes my heart. And that is the, just the absolute goal of what we want to do. Till four thirty. Good. Okay. Great. So, um, is that the last slide? Okay. Okay. The most important slide, I think. We uh, we did some of the things that I shared with you one morning, and we had this uh, first time visitor. Her name was Madeline. And uh, she was about eight or nine years old. And we had, a, I think, a time for just journaling what God had done that, that day. And so this is what she, she wrote that uh, I treasure to, to this day. So today I, I found God. I thought I had him before, but I just realized that I didn't. And I, I am very happy that I am in his presence. And to me, that's a trophy. To me, that's that's a standard. That's a you know what I feel when I every time I read this, and it's been you know several years. I can only imagine what um, Papa God, Father God, Creator of the universe, feels when our kids can say that from from their heart. And. To me, that was a successful day. That if she was the only one, it would be so worth it. But the children to and to feel, to know, without a doubt, I'm in his presence because I feel his goodness. I feel his love. I feel his acceptance. I feel his esteem and value for me. That transforms hearts. Out of that place that she is, her behavior will reflect that. We're not after behavior control, modification, but but the heart. And
and his behavior will follow. So awesome. That's what God, I just wanted to, to share that our discipline issues, as we began to establish this culture of presence-based, God-friendly children's ministry, um, our, our discipline issues plummeted because hearts are being changed. And tomorrow we'll show more, some more of the elements of, of, of kingdom culture that's um, established and practiced in, when our kids get together and the effects that it had, dramatic effects that it had. On that. I wanted to, to read a, a testimony of that for the day, for a while back. And we knew these people um, from a church years ago. And he said, hey, hey, Mike, this is so-and-so. And I want to share with you some stuff that has been going on in our home. Our daughter, and her name was Joy, goes to a Christian school and is in the first grade. Her teacher called a meeting with us and let us in on some problems that she has been having. She has not been interested in things that are they are talking about, such as praying or have a prayer language and re- refuse prayer for that gift. Also, she has been quite mean to her friends to the point that she is getting herself excluded socially. Her teacher told us 10 timeouts a day is not abnormal. We went to the bookstore after that meeting in search of some tools that could help us at home as a parent. One of the items that caught my eye was um, a CD called In Papa's Presence. I've been playing it in her room on her CD alarm clock at night as she relaxes before bed. And then after she is asleep, I go in and start it over again. Sometimes I find out that she has started it uh, over again on her own as, as it is still playing uh, when I go to bed. Tonight she asked if her alarm clock can be set to the CD so that, so that is what she wakes up in the morning. Very cool, she says. The best part is from that very first night, she has had perfect school days. And that one time out. She is her, she is her name at home and a total joy to be around. And so, it's just, you know, it's a soaking CD uh, for kids, and I'm not promoting that, but I just wanted to let you know that when our children encounter his presence, transformation takes place. And that is what we want as parents, as children's ministers. So, uh, we still have time to, that's the last slide. What I'd like to do is just, for us uh, to have that time right now. You know, and that's just to um, invite you for us to come in this presence and just experience that, just to relax, and just to see what God wants to do and say or show to each one of us as parents and children's ministers, as we are, find ourselves in that place and in that account encounter, that's what we get to impart to others. And uh, you know, we have some time, a few minutes to do that. And then the last 10 minutes we'll have uh, for the, the, the writing questions down. But um, in the song. And uh, just what we're going to do is just create this, this place to sat in ourselves, just being still, praying the scripture, and just get to know God. And even a greater way. And normally we do this in the classroom. We might dim the lights just so that there's a just a peaceful atmosphere. We're just setting time for us to be soaked, for our sponges, our hearts to be changed from the way they maybe they were. To something that is like him. And he so desires and is so faithful to be, to just um, be this close to us.
easiest things and hardest things, or the easiest things for kids and the hardest thing for us adults is to just be still and see. We're so given to to having to do some things. But just to be that sponge, motionless. And an easy target for God to pull off his love to us and remind us who we are to him. It's not only the easiest thing. It's a sign and a wonder when you see 60, 70, 80 children just laying for 20, 25 minutes still. You know, it's an um, effect of the presence of God. So what I'd ask is the children ask, you know, what, what did he receive? Or what did he show you? Or how do you feel? And that, that's, again, so important in this whole exercise. So I want to ask you, what are you feeling? What did God show you? God's peace. 
And what we want to do, you know, and that's that's a very common and true answer. Because I'll ask the kids, you know, how did you feel before we began? So what do you feel now? Is there a difference? Does does it feel safe or peaceful? I'll say, yeah. Well, that's that's God's presence. That's His peace. So they're beginning to recognize, oh, this is what God brings. This is what He has. And we begin to train our children about the tangible presence of God. Like, I was worried about school. I'm not worried. Yeah. What else? Anybody else? I have a bright future. That you have a bright future. Man, I hear that from kids of all ages. (laughs) (laughs) Now, how, how does that make you feel, though? Okay, his confidence. His presence, his presence gives you confidence, gives us courage. What else? Anybody? Yeah. Pleasure. You feel there's pleasure, like that. isn't it? That's something. I'm a, I'm a pleasure junkie. I just love it. You know, there's there's the you know we talked at the first um, session about why God is in such a good mood because He's pleased with us. There's this. It's like His omnipresence, but there's a manifested presence. There's an omnipleasure that he has towards us. But one of the things I love at the end of a, a children's service, I just want to feel that manifested pleasure of where I just hear the Father say, thank you for, for inviting me and letting me do what I wanted to do with my kids. And I, I love that. I want to walk out of the room um, experiencing that. What else? Anybody? Creativity. What's that? Creativity. Creativity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You know, whatever's in his heart, God's a creative God. And we're <coughs> a place to receive um, his creativity. Just one on one, letting him just pour that out on you. It's all good. Anybody? Anybody got a picture of anything? Yeah. Row William. Row William. Sweet. Do you like to do that? Okay. What does that mean? You know, you can get an interpretation or just think what, you know, the fact that she loves doing that. God, you know, the father said, yeah, that's my girl. And I, I, I bless that or I affirm her delights and what, what, what pleases her. You know, again, remember that hub of the heart that everything that radiates out is a relational phenomenon. And, it, and it's good. Anybody else get a picture? That's one of that's God's strongest, most common languages. Pictures. Sparkling beach. Sparkling Water beach. Gently rolling in and, and walking along and he's holding a hand. Uh, just one on one. Like to take moonlight walks along the beach, huh? <laughs> During the day. During, During the day. day. Yeah. Water's glistening and it's just bright and sunny and beautiful. He's yeah. holding my hand and we're just walking on the beach. Okay, now, how, what, what were you feeling during that? Just peaceful and joy. Yeah. The calmness. Calmness, that you're, you're his daughter. And he wants to spend one-on-one time with you in a place that is, is, is pure and peaceful. Yeah. He's like that. Anybody else? Another one? Any, any kind of picture? You know, the cool thing about children when you ask them, did you get a picture? They say, well, I saw, uh, I saw an acorn, you know. <laughs> and they don't feel like, oh, I, it has to be something significant or, you know, super spiritual, but I saw an acorn. And uh, but they'll come out and let us say that. And I love that because they may not have the interpretation of what that means, but they're going to say it anyway. And I, I love that purity and that pretentiousness. Did you have Anybody else? Any pictures? Yeah. Uh, those turquoise river. Turquoise river. Yeah. I've never seen that color before, but I really do. A beautiful color. Huh? Mm-hmm. And and what what's the significance of that? Oh, I don't know. Maybe just wanted to show it. I mean, it's up to him. I can share stories that you. <laughs> I'm so tempted. Uh, stories that you wouldn't, you know, it'd be hard to believe. Um, but he just did it because he wanted to. The thing is that it's very healthy to live in mystery. Because if we can explain everything, 
uh, that God does and what he's about, our God is way too small. And we've got him in a box. But living in mystery is good because it causes us to want to go farther with him. And it's a helpful thing. You know, kids will ask me, well, this happened or that happened, and you know, I may not have an explanation. But, uh, but God just likes to show off and let him know that he can do all things whenever he feels like it. And we serve that kind of God. And we're related to that kind of God where nothing's impossible. Or, or he's not limited to our understanding of what he does, or even our understanding of scripture. Scripture said it first, be still. <laughs> and what? We get to, leave, to know more about him. Okay, it's quarter after. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, thank you for sharing that because we've all been there. Hello? Oh, sometimes this will be uh, just introductory because I want to unzip heaven. I just want the atmosphere to be there because you know we have things we want to we want to teach. We want to and we'll, there's certain things we want to do with, with the kids that day, but we will we're very intentional about setting the atmosphere. Do this first. Oh uh, uh, yeah. Usually we the corral time when the kids first come in. We'll do a, we're going to be doing um, what's called a Kingdom Greenhouse, and we give a bunch of different things that we do during the course of the Sunday, not necessarily every Sunday. We're a little bit more fluid. We often find that even though we have two and a half hours, we have adults waiting for us at the end. Oftentimes. Um, they'll be so lined up in the back, which I, I love. It used to be that if I could get through an hour, I was like, oh, thank you, Jesus. <laughs> with but no casualties. With no yeah. casualties, especially maybe the biggest casualty. Um, but we, and we used to have the kids be in worship and then come over, and then we finally beg the pastor, can we please have the kids right away? Um, and and if the, you know, the parents want their children to stay with them in worship, that's fine. But we found out that two and a half hours didn't become a difficult thing for us. And, and we felt free to, like, okay, we're done two hours. Well, let's just have a good time hanging together. Yeah. So, you know, we didn't, I, I became less stressful about having, like, here's my, Here's ten minutes of singing, five minutes of introduction, and all five minutes of this, and being a little bit more free. Yeah. And so um, get into that. that itself kind of helped. That the goal was not necessarily just to get. We we'll get it this morning. The goal wasn't just to get through the lesson, but the goal was to have the kids encounter it, have something, get get something from God. And you know, uh, we always have a lesson planned and. 
And there are days that we actually got through the lesson. Most of the time, we didn't get through the lesson. And I tell people the worst thing that happens is you've got next week ready. <laughs> you know, you get a whole week off now because you have it ready for next week. Um, so that, but this happened over a long time, and we've developed a team. We have a team of eight of us. Um, we would be there every Sunday, and our, our we only had one service at that time. So when you were in children's church, you weren't in the main service, and people keep thinking, "Oh, I'm missing church." No, you're not. You just happen to with the kids. We would have the, our the, our team. We had a team of eight, and we would be there. And if anybody like. Okay, I really want to be there, or I can't be there. We had eight of us, so we had leeway if you couldn't be there that Sunday or whatever, if you want to go to church. Well, we would actually finally say, you have to go over to big church so that people know that you even go to this church anymore. <laughs> and then we would have, we would end early, we'd have, we'd be doing something like this at the end, and we'd have parents that would come in at the back, and they would just... Wow. You know, come in and enjoy the presence of God. We would often find out that what God started doing with the kids and the things that they were seeing is that was what was going on over in the adult service because it's the same God, same Holy Spirit. So it was really always kind of fun to see what was happening because God was because God doesn't want our children to have any less than what we have. We we present it maybe a little bit differently, but I tell I tell all the pastors of the the big people that you really need to start doing object lessons. You really start into like, you know, doing some more of that fun because I think they would, we'd all have a little more fun at church. But that's my thoughts. So, uh, what I wanted to do... Are they supposed to write questions on the piece of paper? Yeah. Is that what supposed to be writing questions. Do you have any questions or... Yeah. You can just ask a question. These, these questions are for the... the for the, the, um, the dinner hour. Dinner hour? Oh. oh. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry. Um... Well, we need our advisor on this. Okay. Okay. So, did you want us? Did you want them to ask questions now? Or just write them down. Or just write them down. Okay. Is there something that maybe right now that you wanted to ask a question about this? Can they? Can we answer that, or should we save it for the panel? Okay. Uh -huh. All those TV, and all that business. Oh, yes. But uh, our thing, we have a, a week, a, a midweek thing that the school gets, and we have a lot of them that come out, but a lot of them that basically it's, it's an outreach to the community. It's not, they're not showing up in church yet. Mm -hmm. But a lot of these parents don't go to church, you know, people come from vacation right. and shit. But, but we've had a thing. Yeah, You're in transition, huh? Yeah. Yes. So, Another word for life. Yeah. <laughs> when aren't we? I've got a 92 year old in our church. You know, we've got three generations. Awesome. But these are all 60 to 90 brats. So, how do you get that leadership in there? Because there isn't a lot of young people in our church. Right. So, um, I, okay. I'm just imagining, you know, as you described this scenario, to me getting up on a uh, on a Sunday morning in front of them and just um, I would just um, uh, begin to affirm them and tell 
and in front of everybody tell the the, the, the senior members um, what they are in God's sight, what they possess, who they are. Because a lot of them feel like I've done my thing, I'm just checking out, I've, and I don't want any more power, I don't feel like I have the energy. But whatever is spoken from the pulpit raises the bar and the value of the whole church. And, um, and if there's somebody that you know that you know, of that age group that is actually doing something or willing to do something. You make that person an example and you celebrate that person in, in the church. That, oh, he came in last, this, this person came in and just shared some of his experiences with God or, you know, just got to share and it was amazing and it, it, it was just so valuable and the kids just received. You know, it, it, it may just start with one person, but you're, you're setting a standard, you're setting an example, and you're publicly uh, affirming, recognizing, and celebrating that person. It now creates a, a standard. And he says, oh, well, this guy's been sitting next to me in the pew. If he's doing it, maybe I could do something like that, too. Okay. Starting small, but just, again, and then if you just see something on him that God's highlighting, just say it in front of everybody. Okay. God sees you as a treasure and a... a, a just, just a bucket of wisdom that our kids desperately need. That's and it's, and it's that's a, that's a, that's a beginning. And we had one lady who <clears throat> we invited her to be part of the, with the children's ministry. And she was like, I really, she's she's a she's the lunch lady at school, at school, school. At our public school. And uh, she goes, well, I don't do anything, but I I can tell a story. I said, well, great. Would you mind coming up some Sunday and telling the kids a story? Okay, she could do that. All right. And then Mike says, well, why don't you just come sit through a kid's service for a couple weeks and see what we're doing? So she did that. And then pretty soon she's doing something. And it was ironic is, is uh, years later, years later uh, she's been involved with children's ministries and then heading up a special children's program and dealing with um, uh, troubled kids. And she never did ever tell a story. <laughs> she also uh, headed up the uh, bus ministry on Saturday nights where we would go into the projects and bring kids into our in, in church for a service on, on Saturday night and uh, the kids came out came and played in, in, in the playground at church and then were brought in and we cooked a meal for them she, being the lunch lady she did that really well sat them in the <laughs> dining room we all sat down with these project kids and had dinner and then we went into the living room because the whole ministry is called the home and uh, we got to minister and teach the kids, but she was part of part of that. But we just um, gave her an opportunity just to catch, you know, what we were doing. And also, we started in, we started a, um, a, a thing we were starting to do after school ministry with the, and the kids. And the school that I, I went to was um, twenty five percent of the children had one or both parents in jail or prison. So it was in a it was in a bad part of the town, and this is actually where my friend was the lunch lady. And uh, she helped me in after school sometimes. And so it was really cool because we just, I just did whatever I did with our ch church kids. I went through some of our stuff with them, uh, with the kids. Uh, but mostly I was just there and loved on them. And then they would run up to our friend Sue and they'd just go up to her and they would get to the point where they were asking her for prayer. And they would just go up and there was a transformation. Another school that we were in, um, it was really fun doing this in, in public schools and after school. And this, we started with two schools, and they're now up to about twelve or so. About twelve or more schools. Public schools. In our and the area. good thing is, as we started in one school, there was a Christian lady there. She asked her principal. He was not a Christian. He was very, very unsure about this. But we had what we called our some uh, some guidelines, and he saw what we were saying, and he really supported. He began to support that. But in that, in one of the schools, there was, of the kids that were coming, there was a change. And the teachers were beginning to see these kids were doing better work. There were more things in what they were doing. So I really am so excited to hear that you're reaching out and being faithful and mainly just being there. Because I had made a promise to those kids that I would be there every Wednesday for them. That I would be there. And one Sunday I'm driving, I'm, I'm driving to go teach the kids. And I'm, Growing up, and I decided I've got the flu. I cannot go. 
that would not be a good thing, and I didn't have time for anybody to come in and back me up and you know take over because at that time I was the only one doing it. Um, so the next week I go, and the first thing was one little girl, spicy little thing. I just loved her. She's so much like me. Um, she comes up and she goes, "You said you'd be here every Wednesday." You know what? It was my promise and keeping my promise to her. That somebody in her life was keeping a promise. I said, well, I was throwing up. Did you want me to throw up on you? And she goes, well, no. And I said, will you forgive me then? Because I just couldn't make it. She goes, okay. I said, but I'll be here now. So you're being just faithful and knowing that those kids can be, they can see your face. If nothing else is accomplished, if you get there, I made sure that every single one of those kids got a hug and I went, I love you for me. Yeah. in their life. So I'm going to get, that's my, yeah. you tell that that was one of my favorite areas. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and, and just with your situation, you know, I may just start with one person. It, you might, there might be just a, a, a great response if you just um, did a sharing on how God is a God of generations. Throughout scripture from Genesis to uh, Revelation. And how we as a church get to represent God of God is a God of worship, and so we, we, we pour into our worship uh, expression. God is a God of nations, and our missions programs are... Um, You're not teaching on that, are you? No. And that, you know, we have missions programs, but God is also a God of generations. How do we, as a church, which is our call to represent and to uh, demonstrate the character and nature of God in our church, how do we demonstrate the fact that God is a God of generations. And just sharing from the pulpit, but it might just start with one person. Okay, then it's, I guess our time's up. Uh, no, I was gonna say something. Can I say something? Oh, I can, I'm up. Okay, yes. okay the those away. Um, part of what that is, is our, I think our culture has lost the honor of honoring those that are older. And we have lost that. And I think that would be great to bring that back in. Um, and so I think what happens when people that are get older just don't, they just feel used up, and they don't feel like they have anything. So we it's need part of the them. culture. You know, and some of them are just tired. I mean, you know, yeah. if you've done children's ministry for a while, you can get burned yeah. out because you haven't filled back yourself. Back. Or ask them just to come in five minutes and share your life, give a testimony. But just hear one thing. You know, you were a firefighter. Come tell a story about yeah. firefighting. Just just to get them engaged with the kids, so the kids will see them and go, oh, "You're the guy that was a firefighter." That guy, that's going to do something. I think we need to bridge the gap. It's, it's amazing how God can take any occupation or experience and uh, reveal the kingdom through it. It's amazing. I want to give away some of these. Uh, this is a, a soaking CD that we, we produced. Uh, it's called Soaking God's Presence. What it is, it's a, like a grassroots.